third and final segment of episode five of Hawk TV with the great Mark Rosen. Uh, we are getting started and wrapping things up here with some uh, some rapid fire questions. Okay. But I don't want you to feel rushed because I'm loving what I'm getting from you. And of course, if we don't get to everything, we'll just read the book. Well, you Best do that. seat in the house. And again, uh, you're going to be signing it for the first time where? Barnes and Noble, downtown Minneapolis on the Nicollet Mall, uh, March 29th from noon till two or mm-hmm. however long they want me to stay right. there. <laughs> I'm right. excited about that. And then a number of them afterwards as well. And and I, I'm going to try to get around, like sure. I said, uh, anywhere our viewing audience or radio audience takes us, I'm going to try to get there in the next year or so. Obviously, I'm sure on Channel 4's websites and everything, but do you have your own website for the book? Anything we do like have a, uh, a Facebook uh, site, um, my Mark Rosen Facebook page, but also our Best Seat in the House page where we're creating and, and uh, putting some video on there as well. And mm-hmm. I'm going to have updates and, and so people can... Um, hopefully go to that page as well. All right, let's backtrack uh, as we were talking at the end of the last segment to what um, what radio did for your career. And I, uh, kind of a different angle on that, though. Uh, did did anybody do things like that back then? No. Nobody had ever done anything like that, no right? No one really done sports radio in the morning. Right. I mean, uh, not even uh, WCCO radio, really. They weren't doing morning radio. Sid had a show still on Sunday mornings, but no one was really doing sports stuff. And, they, and the general manager at KQ came to me and said, um, can you – come on and do some sports updates. This is before Bernard started. My son was born in December of 85, and I thought, well, my life's going to change. I'm going to be sleeping in. is gone sure, now. So right. you know what that's like. So I got up, and, and they put a basically a, a portable, you know, we call it an ISDN mm-hmm. unit, but a, a portable microphone and set up in my kitchen uh, at uh, my townhouse where no I was living. Kidding. And so I came on the air, and uh, they had this typical radio jock kind of doing was morning radio. Was it Dan radio. Cohane? No, no. Cohane okay. was like, no, no. Was okay. like, uh, right. I can't think of the guy's name right now, but I was... I would I would come on for my two to three minute bits. Hey, the twins won last night. Da, 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 da. Sure. So, yeah. See you later. Boom. Just traditional kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, I got a call on um, I don't know late March of of, of that year and um, of '86, and they said, Hey, you ever heard a guy named Tom Bernard? He's going to start tomorrow morning. I've like, heard of a cat man and can, you know, whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I never met him. Came on the next morning, and he started kind of bantering with me, a little bit of this and that, insults, and I'm going, What the heck is this guy about? And bam. Um, we were born six days apart, North Minneapolis. He was born in North Minneapolis. My dad born in North Minneapolis families, you know, crossed over a lot of that stuff. And, and next thing you know, we just took off and ran away from the competition. When did you start going in studio as opposed to just doing it in your kitchen? I would, I would go in the studio, I'd take my son to daycare. So I'd drop him off in St. Louis Park and, and I would drive over their studios in Golden Valley off of Lilac Way, I think it was. But I remember being in the car driving on Highway 100, getting the 55, and I'd, and I'd hear him say, "Mark Rosen, sports up to you up next." And I'm in, I'm in the car. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have no cell phone, and so I just have to just drive there. And you know, I'd roll in there, and next thing you know, it'd be an hour conversation, and, and uh, that's how it all sort of started. Ran uh, for governor later that year, and that whole thing took off. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I don't know the years on this stuff, but sure. didn't a lot of that coincide with '87 and the Twins? It did. No, uh, Hawk, it was '80. I started in '86, okay. and then we became um, in '87. We start, we became the Twins' of course. station. Uh, yeah. It was it was historic in in, in every which way you could, you could imagine. I mean, because uh, anytime the Twins were in first place, and they were not a great team that year. Um, they ended up winning the World Series, but they weren't a great team. Sure. They, every time they got in first place, they'd play what's called the light, happy music, this music, musical bed they'd play on the air. And people would go nuts when they heard it because it means the Twins were in first place. They started playing it at the Dome. No kidding. And we had K, uh, steal that. KQRS uh, Day at the Dome, and I'd go back and tell my TV boss, man, you got to see the excitement out there. And they're going, okay. They I didn't knew get things it, huh? were, yeah. It was like, but this was an altogether different animal. We became their station. With Gaetti and Puckett and Herbick yeah. and all those guys, Viola, Sweet Music Viola, all the way to through when they clinched the, the uh, American League Championship in Detroit. And I came back that night, I read about it in the book. I, I, I was on that team bus, come back through the gates and, and open up that door outside the Metronome, and 63,000 people are going bananas. And it was, it was like we at the radio station over there, was like we were like part of the part team. Part of the team. It really felt that way. So it was an extraordinary time, and of course, ended up winning the World Series. and. It was it was bananas. It really was. But it was fun to be a, a big part of it. But the KQ did have a big part of it. Oh, i, I got to ask you a lot more about it. We might even have time for it. Sure. But I'd love to know more about what it was like to actually be traveling with the team as oh, a reporter back then. Yeah, but Because yeah. obviously now I do it with the Vikings, but as part of their broadcast team, it's different when you're not working for them, I'm sure. And I'm sure sometimes it wasn't comfortable. Well, I wasn't traveling with them all the time, but okay. it was it was just it was during the the, the, the important times, and we we, we, weren't, we didn't have that kind of a budget, but we, I was with them when they, when they clinched the division in Texas and then – all the way through, obviously, starting the playoffs in Detroit, where they were not favored at all, and then to St. Louis. But I had my credentials yanked 
that's a whole other story against the St. Louis Cardinals because uh, we, they, I got put on the air before ABC's coverage was off. So I literally was like the scarlet letter. Our crew got I got I got escorted really? out of the metronome by security after game one of the World Series. You imagine my excitement of trying to be able to cover a team in a World Series, and I get thrown out of my own building. It was un- unbelievably embarrassing. Wow. And, uh, we got it finally resolved, but but the end of the. Uh, World Series, but it was one of those Oof. moments that yeah, we'll forget about. Uh, uh, people always say, uh, you know, talk, talk to me when they're talking to me about my little career. They say, you know, tell me the, the secret, this, that, and the other. And I always say, a lot of it's been being in the right place at the right time. Sure. You got, you gotta, you gotta get yourself there. But a lot of it's being in the right place at the right time. You've been in the right place at the right time a lot of times, haven't you? I mean, thinking about coming to radio in 1987 when the Twins have that happen, walking into the station at that point when they right. needed somebody to do something little like that. Obviously, you got to put yourself in that spot, but you're you've been fortunate too. Oh, I absolutely have been fortunate. I admit that, and I think it's it's like I, you know I tell people, um, you have to take advantage of those opportunities mm-hmm. because they don't come along very often, and you have to know what to do when you get them. I mean, you have to put your foot on the pedal, Mr. Race Car Driver, yeah. and go and be yourself, and don't try to be someone else. But you you have to stay true to yourself. But if you have an opportunity to get that foot in the door, you don't. <laughs> You don't let it slam behind you, mm. um, and it sounds like a cliche, but it's the absolute truth. But I mean, it, it's perseverance, yeah. it's it's passion, it's dedication, it's a lot of things um, that you you you're not being afraid of failure. I mean, you, you're all going to fail. We've all had miserable times and Look miserable foolish. years and, yeah, and moments sure. and bosses and this and that. You just have to keep moving. One of the right places at the right time was one of the greatest places to ever be in the history of sports. Lake Placid, New York. Yeah. 1980, the Miracle on Ice. I mean, I, I've talked to you about it on the air. Yeah. You're, I, I'm going to read about it in your book. But in just a couple of minutes, can you tell me what that was like? Well, it, it was not something that was on the front burner when we yeah. went there. Um, I was pleased to go because it was not on CBS. It was an ABC event, and yet they, they sent us because of the number of Minnesota athletes there. And so, again, this was before the advent of live remotes. I wasn't going to New York. I was not doing going standing in front of the Lake Placid sure. Arena going, hey, Mark Rosen here, the U.S. is getting played. No, we were sending our tape back to the, to the station via satellite by the airport. Sure. And so it was a process. I mean, it, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep this quick, but I mean, it, the, the, the U.S. played its first game against Sweden the night before the opening ceremonies. The building's half empty. Half empty. They're playing Sweden, and they're losing 2-1. to one. I'm thinking, oh, you know, here we go. And that, that didn't bother me. I think they weren't that care. good. They weren't, weren't very good. Deal. Yeah, right. Bill Baker, they pulled the goalie. Bill Baker, who's now an oral, been an oral surgeon up in the Brainerd area for many years, scores the tying goal. You knew Bill from those days at the U, obviously. We were close. And everybody's celebrating. They tie the game. All right. They got, they got a point. Next day, the opening ceremonies. Then the next game, they play Czechoslovakia. They beat them 7-3. to three, And that's the night that the USA chant started. And so then they played West Germany. And they play, and it's building, it's building, it's building. And going, what in the heck is going on here? All of a sudden, you see in the schedule, Soviet Union, Friday night, 4 o'clock. Okay, the game starts. And the place is going crazy outside the arena. Tickets are being scalped for probably 60 bucks. It's yeah, so extraordinary. right. Uh, the game's not televised live. The U.S. Olympic Committee refused to change the, the start time to accommodate national television. Oh, goodness. So the, it's not being televised live. Um, but I'm covering the game at 4 o'clock out there, local time. And because there's no TV timeouts, you're watching it and... You see this thing building and building, and the crowd is 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 slow. I mean, you, you hear it and you see the movie Miracle when they come out in the third period. Bigger than that. No kidding. I, you know, I always tell people we've all been in in noisy stadiums where your ears almost bleed. This wasn't noise. I've heard noise. This was passion. This was a will. This was the the, the crowd willing this team to win. I mean, you could feel, I get goosebumps now thinking yeah. about it because I can close my eyes and hear it. I've heard loud noises. This wasn't, that was, no, 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 no. You literally couldn't hear yourself think. And then they scored the tying goal. And then, of course, Ruzioni got the winning goal. In the last 10 minutes, I mean, it was psychotic. It was like being on the ice with him, I'm sure. It was like being yeah. on the ice. But then I had to get my job done. I'm a, now, here's where you, you say you separate yourself from being a fan and a reporter. Well, I wasn't trying to be objective. Who in the hell would do it? Who cared? Who yeah, right. I didn't care. Yeah, right. I have to rush as soon as the game is over across from the arena. The high school, which is right across this, the literally the walkway from the Lake Class Arena, is where our media headquarters were. But we didn't have cell phones. We had our phone that was our that, that was our phone. So I rushed in the media room, grabbed the phone, I look at my watch, it's six twenty Minneapolis time. That means our sportscast is on the air. 
I grabbed the phone. I wish I had a recording of uh, it. You don't have a recording don't of it? Don't have it. Oh, no. It wasn't kept. I'm on the phone with R.J. Fritz. And I said, do you believe in miracles? No, I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Then that damn L. Michael stole yeah. my line. No, but I, I said, the U.S. just beat the Russians. I'm scre- I mean, I'm screaming in the phone because I couldn't hear myself think. And that's how a lot of people found out that the U.S. Wow. had won the game if they happened to be watching the sports that night. Because p- unless you were listening to it on the radio, you didn't know. Absolutely. You didn't know. And then the game was going to be replayed at 8 o'clock that night. So obviously you knew going in it was going to be a big game. Yeah. At what point during the game did you say, my gosh, this is special? Now, obviously coming out for the third period, it was going to be. But that was there was... A, a moment in the first period where you're like, oh, no. my gosh, no, nothing. No, no, no. I thought they were going to get beat 7-3. to three. Really? Oh, yeah. Because Everybody did, I'm sure. Listen, the Russians Russia. watched them practice. Yeah. They were robotic. They were, they, were the, they, were the, they were the big red machine. This was a team that beat the, the best of the United States NHL players handily. They beat this U.S. team 10-2 to 2 or whatever it was the week before the mm. game started. No, there was never a moment I thought they were going to win. I thought there was a moment they might make it close, but the Russians were just pirouetting around, and, and Jim Craig was standing on his head, and all of a sudden then they got a little nervous because the, the big mistake, of course, everyone talks about it, that the Russians pulled the greatest goaltender in the world, Vladislav uh, uh, Trechak, at the end of the second period. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and then you kind of sensed that the third period was the only, the only time we felt there was even a chance of going right. to win. Wow. What an incredible And that wasn't even for the gold medal. Yeah, right. That wasn't. And I've never been so nervous as that then on Sunday morning going over for the game against Finland. I was a nervous wreck because I I felt like pit of my stomach because I really wanted them to win. So Herb had the big speech on Friday. You're born to be a player. You're meant to be here. You know that. His speech on that Sunday morning was a little different. Basically, he said, you F this up, you'll take it to your bleeping graves. I bet. That was the speech. <laughs> Did, were you there for when that speech happened? No, or no, you no. Just we were allowed that? in there. Okay, I never I got didn't a chance know. to see yeah. the, Hawk, we never got a chance to get down in the locker room at all because our credentials didn't allow us. Until the, I've been back for the reunion, one of my greatest moments of my career in, in the 25-year reunion. All those guys went back. Of course, it was, on, it was after Herb's death um, in the car crash. We all went back. In fact, Patty Brooks was there. They rededicated the arena to him, and we went back and having beers with Bill Baker and, and, and Bercota and all these guys and Eric Strobel were sitting right across from Lake Placid Arena, toasting Herb, and it was like I was part of the team. It mm-hmm. felt so good because I you know, get and Broughton and all those guys. See Neil Broughton with his father walking him into that locker room. The, all the sweaters exactly the way they were that night in, in locker room number mm-hmm. five. is just cramped little locker room. It's not like it looked in the movie Miracle. Yeah, right, it was cramped. Right little locker room but they you, you could you could imagine they said the noise that was that was reverberating in here that you could hear it incredible all right so we've talked about the best moment of your career yep. can you think off the top of your head what's the worst moment of your career whether it be for you or something tragic a tragic that you were yeah. covering something i think from a from a coverage standpoint there's been some personal stuff i think um certainly the law when, when kirby puckett died it was yeah. really really hard because I, I had a kirby was one who gave me my nickname rosie first of all he was the Pied Piper of Minnesota, and I think getting to know Kirby the way I did, and we had our mostly 99% ups. We had we had some downs, just a little bit about some personal stuff that I talk about in the book, uh, having to go with the charity I got involved with, but but it really, it, it didn't matter. Uh, and, and just being with Puck was, um, and being down in spring training when, when he suffered the massive stroke mm-hmm. in Arizona, and having, again, sort of being the conduit to the public and knowing what was going on, yeah. severity. and how much he meant it. to us all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously the Corey Stringer tragedy spoke for itself, but people, the fans didn't know Corey Stringer the way they knew they, they mm-hmm. knew Puck. Not to take anything away from the of impact of it, yeah. but of course not. Um, so that was um, that was devastating, those two instances. I think, um, you know, professionally, you, you lose people that you work with that were that really hard. It's really hard. Darcy Pollan was... Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mentioned in, in, in early in my book, she was an unstoppable force, a woman who suffered a diving accident early in her life and was paralyzed, but in a wheelchair. When you looked at Darcy, you never saw the wheelchair. She's a woman who has inspired so many people because of the way um, she conducted her life. And, and, like, what am I complaining about? She went out and covered the toughest yeah. of stories. And, and So when, her, when she passed away, it was, it was a real blow to all of us uh, as, a, as a group at Channel 4 but, uh, and to the community, uh, you know, certainly to me individually as well. I swear I could do this all day, but I got time for just I one know, more question you for do. you. Uh, let's say my son Alex walks up to you, he's 17 years old, and he says, Mr. Rosen, and he better call you Mr. Rosen, <laughs> um, I'm thinking <laughs> I might want to do television. What, what, what do you say to him? Go for it. Uh, here's the problem. I, I, it's not a problem. I always tell people I would never, after what I've experienced, um, mentorship, this is why, again, probably why I wrote the book, it, was, it means it meant everything to me. So I am always want to give people, try to give people the right advice. But it's a different world we live in now. As you know, and, and my, my, I have adult children. There are very few careers anymore. I've had a career. You've had a career. Yeah. There are jobs, but you've got to be flexible. You have to have – I was single-minded. Yeah. I said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. Fortunately, it worked out for me. 
God, I don't know what I would have done if this didn't work out. And I really mean that. You know, I don't know what I would have done. Today, you can't tell your children that. You have to say, go for it, but this is what you better do yeah. if this doesn't work sure. out. And have a, a much broader plate. A backup plan, maybe. Plans. Yeah. Because hmm. days of getting 401ks and health retirement benefits and health care, not yeah. great. Um, so, I mean, but I would never say, you know, don't go into it. Just understand that um, if you get that opportunity, like we talked about earlier, yeah. kick that door open. Don't let go. If anybody ever in 20 years ever has any inkling or any reason to interview me, I'll tell them one of my mentors was Mark Rosa. Well, that means a lot to me, Hawk. Yeah. Thanks it's so been much. an honor to work with you. Oh, it really it's been has. Fun. We've had a blast. Absolutely. Good Thanks. luck with the book. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sure it'll overperform what you're hoping. Well, I'm 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 glad it's done. It's mm -hmm. there. So when I'm six feet is. under, you know, Mike Morris can actually read it and he'll be long dead before you. I guess you're right. Yeah. No Best seat that. in the house, Mark Rosen. Thanks for taking that seat. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Absolutely. Loved it. Hawk TV episode five is in the books. And again, you are signing it when and where? Thursday, March 29th, Barnes & Noble downtown, Nicollet Mall, 12 to noon, 12 to 2. I think uh, Common's going to do a show down there as well, and that'll we'll get the word out after that as well. Go see it. Go read it. Go read it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you again. And I'm there on the camera. This is what you see. We take a quick commercial break, but they come right back to me. I got an iPad in my pants, and I ain't afraid to show it, show it, show it, show it. Show it. <laughs> I'm Rosie and I know it. This is a special, special talent. You are so disgusting. Go see it. I'm Rosie and I know it. Go see it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm stupid.